Welcome to Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Christian Dior postpones mega event fashion show in Hong Kong. Shanghai Stock Index reclaims 3,000 mark in recovery rally. Legacy chips emerge as new front in US China semiconductor battle. Lotus Tech to launch autonomous driving cars in 60 Chinese cities this year. China State Council vows measures to lure foreign investment. Christian Dior postpones mega event fashion show in Hong Kong. South China Morning Post. Christian Dior has postponed a highly anticipated fashion show in Hong Kong due to commercial reasons and uncertainties in China's economy. The event, which was expected to cost around 100 million Hong Kong dollars, 12.8 million dollars, was scheduled to take place on March 23 at the Kai Tak Cruise Terminal. The show was part of Hong Kong's planned mega events and was aimed at boosting the city's tourism industry. However, Dior has decided to delay the event due to economic challenges faced by China, including a property market downturn and fluctuations in global demand. Shanghai Stock Index reclaims 3,000 mark in recovery rally. Nikkei Asia. China's benchmark Shanghai Composite Index gained for an eighth straight session on Friday, surpassing the psychologically important 3,000 mark. The index closed up 0.55% at 3,004, marking the longest stretch of consecutive gains since June and July 2020. Chinese stocks have faced downward pressure due to the country's real estate slump and concerns over long-term economic growth. In response, the China Securities Regulatory Commission, CSRC, has expanded curbs against short selling, and Central Huijin Investment has announced increased purchases of exchange-traded funds. Additionally, Yi Huiman has been replaced as chair of the CSRC by Wu Qing, signaling a willingness to consider the opinions of market participants. Legacy chips emerge as new front in U.S.-China semiconductor battle. South China Morning Post. The U.S. Commerce Department has awarded $1.5 billion to global foundries under the $50 billion Chips for America program. The funds will be used to expand two manufacturing facilities, open a new one, and strengthen the domestic supply of older generation, or legacy, chips. Global Foundries also produces essential chips measuring 12 nanometers and above. Legacy chips are still widely used in cars, home appliances, and consumer electronics, and are gaining attention from Western countries, who may discuss or implement restrictions on Chinese chips. The US and China are both trying to develop the world's most advanced 3 nanometers chips. China has been doubling its efforts to reduce its reliance on imported chips. The US has criticized China's subsidies to its chip makers, fearing overcapacity and price distortion. The US Commerce Department report estimated that China has provided $150 billion in subsidies over the past decade. The US government is considering tariffs and limitations on market access as potential measures to address these concerns. China imported $378 billion worth of semiconductors in 2020 and is looking to become more self-sufficient, with forecasts suggesting it could control 46% of global capacity in the 50 to 180 nm range within a decade. Lotus Tech to launch autonomous driving cars in 60 Chinese cities this year. South China Morning Post. Lotus Technology, the luxury electric vehicle, EV, manufacturer, plans to deploy its semi-autonomous driving system in 60 major Chinese cities this year. The subsidiary of UK sports car maker Lotus Group, which is majority owned by Chinese carmaker Zhejiang Jili Holding, will target the premium segment of the EV market, despite a slowdown in the Chinese economy. Lotus Tech is set to deliver its second mass-production EV model to Chinese customers next month, with the aim of carving out a niche in the country, which is the world's largest automotive market. China State Council vows measures to lure foreign investment. Bloomberg. China State Council has urged authorities to boost foreign investors' confidence in the country and implement measures to attract more global capital. The council pledged to expand market access and create an environment for fair competition to increase the confidence of foreign investors in the country. The council also highlighted the issue of inconvenience for visiting foreigners to pay in China and called for measures to promote the use of mobile, card, and cash payments. The Chinese government is also seeking to boost sales of cars, home appliances, and consumer products. Beijing warns China's huge financial sector, serve real economy and enrich lives. South China Morning Post. China's financial sector has been warned against fake financial innovation and urged to focus on supporting the real economy. China's state media, People's Daily, called for the financial sector to be more dedicated to technological innovation, advanced manufacturing, green development and small enterprises. 
The warning comes as regulators tighten rules governing quant trading and address concerns over the fragility of the nation's financial system. China has vowed to regulate all financial activities whilst also pledging to further open up to the global market. Macau poised to drive development of Bay Area sports industry, summit hears. South China Morning Post. Macau is aiming to become a key player in the sports industry as it looks to diversify its economy beyond gaming. The city, which is already a center for trade and economic cooperation with strong conference and tourism facilities, is well positioned to connect with the sports industry, particularly in the Greater Bay Area. The government has released a development plan to promote sports and leisure projects, and plans to stage more high-level international sporting events in the city. Hong Kong vows to regulate stable coins, over-the-counter crypto shops. South China Morning Post. The Hong Kong government intends to regulate stable coins and over-the-counter, OTC, crypto exchanges, aiming to submit bills on licensing rules for OTC trading services and stablecoin issuers to the Legislative Council as soon as possible, according to the city's financial affairs chief. Hong Kong has seen a surge in crypto scams that have defrauded retail investors, with the number of virtual asset-related criminal cases more than doubling between 2021 and 2023. The government's proposal for virtual asset spot trading services providers to seek a license follows draft rules unveiled in December requiring stablecoin issuers to obtain a license to sell to retail investors. China's home prices fall at a slower pace as Beijing moves to resuscitate sector. South China Morning Post. Home prices in mainland China fell in January, but at a slower pace compared to December, according to official data. Prices of newly built homes in 70 large and medium cities fell 0.37% in January, compared to a 0.45% decline in December. Second-hand home prices dropped 0.68%, compared to a 0.79% slide in December. The weak home prices, along with the continued contraction in new home sales, highlight a poor start for China's property sector this year. Taobao China Software to Sell Sooning.com Stake to Alibaba Affiliate. Yahoo! Alibaba and Taba China Software is to sell its 20% stake in Chinese retailer Sooning.com to another Alibaba affiliate, Hangzhou Haoyue Enterprise Management. The stake is reportedly worth $389 million, which is far less than the $4.6 billion Alibaba paid for it in 2015. The move comes following Alibaba's announcement that it is planning to sell some of its traditional physical retail businesses. Well, 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 my dear viewers, it seems we have quite a diverse range of news stories today, covering everything from fashion shows to financial regulations. But fear not, for I am here to guide you through it all with my usual wit and charm. First up, we have Christian Dior postponing their mega fashion show in Hong Kong. It seems even the world of high fashion is not immune to the economic challenges faced by China. But hey, maybe it's for the best. I mean, who wants to see models strutting down the runway in clothes they can't afford anyway? Next, we have the Shanghai Stock Index reclaiming the 3,000 mark. It's been a bumpy ride for Chinese stocks lately, but it seems they're starting to bounce back. I guess you could say they're on the road to recovery. Let's just hope it's not a dead cat bounce, because no one wants to see a dead cat on the stock market. That would be a real catastrophe. Moving on, we have the US-China semiconductor battle heating up. It seems the US is trying to protect its legacy chips from the clutches of Chinese manufacturers. Who would have thought that old, outdated chips could cause such a fuss? But hey, if they're still good enough for cars and home appliances, then I say let them have their moment in the sun. And speaking of cars, Lotus Tech is planning to launch autonomous driving cars in 60 Chinese cities this year. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't wait for the day when I can sit back, relax, and let my car do all the driving. Just think of all the things you could do with that extra time. You could catch up on your favorite TV shows, read a book, or even take a nap. The possibilities are endless. Moving on, we have China's State Council vowing measures to lure foreign investment. It seems China is rolling out the red carpet for foreign investors, or maybe it's more like a red carpet light. Either way, they're trying to make it easier for foreigners to invest in the country. And hey, who can blame them? Foreign investment brings in money, jobs, and maybe even a few new ideas. So, why not welcome it with open arms? Next, we have Beijing warning China's financial sector to serve the real economy and enrich lives. I guess they're tired of all that fake financial innovation. It's time to get back to basics and focus on what really matters. And what really matters is technological innovation, advanced manufacturing, green development, and small enterprises. It's about time someone reminded the financial sector of that. Moving on, we have Macau aiming to drive the development of the Bay Area sports industry. 
Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of Macau, I don't exactly think of sports. I think of casinos and bright lights. But hey, maybe they're onto something here. Maybe Macau could become the next big sports hub. Just imagine, a city known for its gambling and its sports. It's like Las Vegas on steroids. Next, we have Hong Kong vowing to regulate stablecoins and over-the-counter crypto shops. It seems they're cracking down on all those crypto scams that have been defrauding retail investors. I guess they've had enough of all the virtual nonsense and are ready to bring some order to the wild west of cryptocurrencies. And finally, we have China's home prices falling at a slower pace. It seems the Chinese government is trying to resuscitate the property sector, but it's still a long road ahead. So, if you were thinking of buying property in China, maybe hold off for a little while longer. You don't want to be caught in a falling market. Well, my dear viewers, that's all the news we have for today. I hope you enjoyed my witty commentary and insightful analysis. Now it's your turn to join the discussion. What do you think about these news stories? Do you have any thoughts or questions? I'm all ears. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.